And with uh, any investor, you don't need any panic selling right now. It is going to do you no good to try to ride the wave down as this market is obviously going to go all over the place for, for at least uh, the foreseeable future. Scott, you know as well as I do, at some point you've got an investor out there that is going to say, what if I need the money? Yeah. Yeah, so that really comes back to the financial planning issue. It, it, you do want to control, you know, you don't want to panic sell. So you want to control what you sell and when you sell it. So in our retirement planning, we look at that, and in retirement is obviously when you're going to most likely going to need to sell something. It needs to be in something that is not uh, allocated or exposed to market risk. So in our retirement client's case, it does not disrupt their consistent income that is coming into them because they're taking that from a bucket, so to speak, that is not invested in stock. So that stock investment, that market risk is being pushed down the road for later times. Scott Inman with Gen Wealth. Uh, Scott, what are you seeing there? I mean, uh, are you seeing investors uh, be on the sidelines, be fairly calm, or are they uh, taking it in stride? Have they seen? I mean, when you, we, you look back, and if you've been in the markets for any given time, you've seen some things happen. Yeah. You saw what happened in 2008. Uh, eight, you saw what happened in 9-11. You might go back as far as 1987 with the Black Monday crash there. But what, what are you seeing uh, for the, 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 t- the typical investor? Well, I think it's important. I mean, there, there's no question that this virus or the response that we are, um, we are making to this virus is causing some damage to the economy. And that has institutional investors. And, and let's, let's draw the distinction between in, institutional investors and retail investors trying to predict, right? The market hates uncertainty. And they are trying to look down the road at how bad is this going to get and for how long is it going to get. But quite frankly, when you ask me what we're seeing, we work with retail investors and we haven't had a lot of panic. I haven't had one call of anybody that wants to sell. In fact, if anything, I've had a half a dozen or so from people that have cash on the sidelines wanting to get in because the market is down. Well, things are on sale. I mean, there's the risk it could go down more. But, I mean, historically, if you look at averages where we were in the high 20s, uh, there's no reason to think at some point we're going to get back there to get, again. We're seeing the government make some moves. Now, Congress mm-hmm. is being Congress. You know, they're kind of uh, tossing the ball around a little bit here. But it looks like we're going to get some sort of relief, at least uh, on the mm-hmm. national level. Yeah, so I, I watched uh, one uh, video from one economist that I like to follow yesterday, and, and he estimated that the market is already, already pricing in a 50 to 80% decline in corporate profits. Now, to put that in perspective... When we had a more prolonged downturn in 2008, they, the uh, decline in corporate profits reached 46%. So he's basically saying the market is pricing in a worse corporate profit drop than we had in 2008. And I, and I don't really see that happening. Now, I think when this thing does turn back, it's going to turn back with a sharp turn up. And I think when you think about it from an investor perspective, it's going to turn before the virus story is over, right? Because we're going down farther than we should probably go right now because the market's trying to be forward-looking. And the same thing's going to happen when we pull out. Scott Emma with Gen Wealth. Uh, Scott, you know, maybe you could explain it, too. Uh, how is this downturn any different from what we've seen in the past? It'd be it 2008, 1987, yeah. 9-11. What are the similarities, and, and what makes this one stand out? Well, certainly in 2008, you had a true financial crisis, and the banks were a mess, and we had a lot of uh, problems to dig out of. And, and 9-11, not only was that a longer-term, I think, uh, situation in itself, the event, and trying to figure out who was responsible for uh, the bombings uh, and, the, uh, and the Trade Center collapse, but then we went into a prolonged war in Iraq after that. So those were true, long, economic uh, problems that we had. The, we were chugging along really well when this thing came along. And there is no reason to believe that when it's over, we won't return to those levels, in my opinion. So I think that it, it, the, the condensed version of this is that once the virus is contained and once we are past this, and if you look at previous pandemics, eventually we're going to get out of this, then the market is going to be able to go back up, I think, a little bit in a shorter time period than than we saw in things like 9-11 and 2008. Scott Emma with Gen Wealth. Uh, Scott, if you look at this and, and what happened here, um, everything about it, and you mentioned it, the markets do not like uncertainty. Yeah. Whether it's a word from a government official that the markets don't like to hear, uh, they can sway down if they yeah. hear something they like. Uh, like yesterday, they mm-hmm. swayed right back up. 
Now, you got the down on the futures this morning, and who knows where it ends up at the end of the day. We just don't know. But with that said, if you look at the history, it's all about COVID-19 at the moment. But you go back two weeks ago, we were talking about Saudi Arabia Mm -hmm. and Russia, and that's where the first real drop-off started. Why did that happen? Well, I think that that is pure retaliation. I mean, I think Saudi Arabia is seeing an opportunity, uh, and you're talking about the, the the oil prices have been driven down because of the uh, as a result of the OPEC meeting and, and the decision to change the supply, and they are seeing an opportunity. I, I I agree with a lot of the writers who've written about this that this is a this is a false uh, decision. Uh, this is nothing really market related. Saudi Arabia is seeing an opportunity um, to hurt us. And I, I think that's probably the biggest story that no one's talking about right now. Uh, it's good for the consumer. We, we all love to go to the, the gas pump and pay under $2 a gallon for gas, but it is bad for the oil companies operating on borrowed money in order to drive America's energy independence. Well, and there's an argument that I would say, and I'm not an analyst, but there's an argument that says uh, that it actually helps our economy in the long term, or maybe even the short term, as we emerge from this. If gas prices are cheaper, it means people have more money in their pocket to spend on other goods, and it might be the boost that the economy needs. Yeah, well, I did say it was good for the consumer. There's no question about that. It, it will help them uh, get by for people who are dealing with less income, possibly even no income right now. I think that that is good for the consumer, but we don't want it to last for a long time. I mean, I'm not obviously a proponent of $4 a gallon gas by no means, but I think that it needs yeah. to be a little more uh, market uh, sensitive or not market sensitive, but uh, it, it needs to be on par with what the market is demanding. Any moves I need to make right now? If I'm an individual investor, what do I do? I think that greatly depends on where you are in your retirement timeline and, and, and when you're going to need to be using uh, some of your investments. I, I, I don't think when the market is going down is the time to probably get more conservative because you're not going to ride the wave back up, but hopefully you came into this thing with a diversified portfolio. You weren't fully in on the market if you're closing in on retirement. The financial planning part of that uh, sets that up. You know, For us, it's all about the plan first, and that sets the investment strategy. So if you have an investment strategy in place, you hopefully weren't taking the full ride down. But while you are taking it, don't panic sell. Ride this out. Uh, stay in the in the market through the the summer. I think that's when we're going to see things turn around, and you know, be positioned. But the the bottom line is, if you what you should do is have a plan. Uh, if you don't have a plan for retirement, I think that's the number one thing you need to to build. We we see the data all the time. We we quote it on our show all the time. You know, less than fifteen percent of, of investors have a true financial plan. So if you don't have a plan, you just have a collection of investments. Scott Emma with Jim Wilk. Good to have you on this morning. Good advice. Thanks so much. My pleasure, Kevin. 740.